Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sky194 and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to stop in and check out my video. And uh, I just wanted to talk about the uh, Honda here for a little bit. Um, the Honda, since the update, has got some changes. Now, I, I mean, I just came out, so bear with me for, on this video. Um, we, we're going to be maybe just a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, when they did the update... And I mentioned it in the uh, in another video, just shortly on the at the end of the video, but they basically, you know, I did the setups for Zanvor and I did a setup for Laguna Seca, and um, when I went back to check them after the update and the DLC and all those kinds of things, um, the parameters have were all changed. So. Um, basically nothing, very little was the same of what my, of my setup. Um, you know, the springs were all different. The shock settings were all kind of crazy settings. So all kinds of stuff. And so really, I'm not sure how good it'll work. Um, it, I mean, I think I drove it a little bit at a few tracks and it didn't, you know, it wasn't real bad, but it definitely wasn't the same. So I'm going to go through in this video and first of all, I'm gonna. I have a brand new setup for Monza here, which I was working on before the update. I just never finished it and didn't get the handling and the performance where I wanted. So I never just haven't got around to finishing it. So I went ahead and finished that um, and have this set up for for Monza for the Honda NSX Evo. And then after this, we're gonna go to uh, Laguna Seca and Zandvoort. I don't know if that order. But we're going to go there, and I'm just going to show you there just the setup. I'm not going to go show you a lap and all this other stuff because I've already done the, already done that in other videos. So basically, I'm just going to go there and revisit the setup and show you the setup and maybe talk about some of the particulars that I've had to change or to get the balance back or whatever. And, of course, I'll leave links to all these setups in the description. And I'll probably take the links and leave it in the, other, in the older videos of what to do you know, links to this video. Um, so I'll probably do that um, because otherwise people get confused and basically go to th that other one and then try to use it and it's not right. So basically um, this here setup, it works really well. Um, again, it seems like the performance of the Honda has really come up. Of course, here in the States, the Evo 2, which as far as I know, is going to be coming out here probably in the next... Uh, DLC or update or whatever coming out this summer with the tracks from America and all that. And, uh, of course, they call it Acura here in the States. It's it's listed under that brand, um, even though it's the same car. Of course, Honda owns Acura, obviously. But it's just, you know, in Europe it's called Honda, and here in the States it's called Acura. Um, I don't know what the, how they're going to do it, but, I mean, f as far as I know, the States are the only ones using the Honda Evo 2. So... Basically, I know that they were getting data from the American teams, um, Kunos was, and that's the last I heard. And I still think, and again, this is just my opinion, this is not based on anything I've found out or fact or anything else, but I just think they're getting that into the car, setup changed, so when they upload it, it's basically already there. The parameters of the car are probably going to be very similar, and there are going to be other changes maybe to go with it, but pretty much the parameters... Because I'm, I'm pretty sure they're getting data from uh, the American teams on the Honda slash Acura. So basically, that's again just my thoughts. Um, but it has picked up a lot of performance from when I was trying to get this thing get set up done till now. So something's changed. And to be honest, it's you know it's either uh, it's lighter or it just it handles to me it handles about the same, maybe a little better, but it just seems. My performance has really jumped up dramatically, and from when I had it before, and but the speed hasn't. The speed has actually gone down, maybe a teeny bit. So it's really crazy. So anyway, um, things don't really add up, but hey, that's, the clock doesn't lie. So let's make a lap. And again, this is going to be the only track that I do this at. The other tracks, I will just go in and show you the setups and maybe talk about the setups, but that's it. Let's 
see what the speed was. I wasn't really paying attention, to be honest. So it was 168 to maybe, I mean, I was doing 170 before. So I've lost a, a mile and a half to two miles an hour from before when I had the other setup. And the wing is more, I had one click more wing before than I do now. So I, I really, I really don't can't put my finger on it. I don't really get that, but it is better on the brakes. So that's maybe where I'm picking it up, and we're going to talk about that in the setup. It's definitely better on the brakes than it was before. So that that might be a big, big uh, increase there. It's not like it's got low speed because I've had some other cars that did 168 and things like that, 169, so it's there, but it's, you know, it's in that general area. Speed here is about the same, 163. see I got 70 liters I started with 81 so it's got a you know still got a decent amount of fuel it still ran a high 48 I mean for me that's pretty decent that's respectable um, so that's definitely right there in the mix for sure so let's go to the setup got 25 2 left front 25 6 left rear 26.6 right front and 26.5 right rear. The toe on the front is negative 0.1, with the camber at negative 3.6 on the left front, negative 3.4 on the right front. The caster is 8.4, and on the rear, the toe is negative 0.1, with the camber at negative 3.1 on the left rear and negative 3 on the right rear. And again, all these were different. Caster was all the way down. I mean, uh, all these settings were just all, all changed when I went there to check my. Uh, to check the setup i just like whoa i didn't have it like this so it was like totally different uh again that's three four and three for the uh electronics fuel i had 81 liters number one brake pad um mechanical got five on the anti roll bar 51 on the brake bias this is the big difference here that i see between before the update steering's all the way down springs on the front are 139,880 with a 400 bump stop rate and a 5 bump stop range on the left and a 10 bump stop range on the right. And on the rear, the springs are 197,900 with a bump stop rate of 300 and a bump stop range of 15 on the left rear and 25 on the right rear. Any roll bar is 4 and the preload on the diff is 60. Now on this page, if you remember, uh, if you want to look at that video, when I was at Laguna Seca, I had the... Uh, brake bias maxed at 50. That's as low as it would go. Now look at it. I mean, it goes all the way down to 44 now. So it, it, it goes way, way, way down. And so you can be a lot more aggressive with the brakes. And it, it uh, I think that's where you pick up some time. The bump stop rates have changed. All these things. And I mean, this thing was all everywhere. I don't even, not even remotely close to where I had the setup. Um... And the same thing about the shocks. I got the shocks, and some of the values were zero, and a lot of them were zero, and this and that. I mean, it was just all crazy stuff. So um, I went ahead and went through back through Motec and did all this. And of course, obviously, this wasn't a completed setup, but it was still, it was you know my basically my pre setup to where it was close. But um, but I, anyway, so I had to go through it anyway uh, again. So on the front, it's eight one seven two. And on the rear, it's 4158. Arrow, I got 56 on the front. 
62 in the rear with a three rear wing and a three and a three in the brake ducts. And the front arrow variation is 8.2 to the positive. Now, the last one I was doing when I had uh, was I had a four rear wing. So I had a, just a, one more click rear wing, and I was actually doing 170 down the front straightaway. So again, you know, my conditions are always basically the same. Um, very close on speed, you know, wind and all those kinds of things. And um, so, hey, I, I, I don't really can't really explain it, but that's just the way it was. But I know I picked up a lot because I was struggling to run to run uh, mid 49s before with a f with a race fuel load. So, um, you know, I, I really don't have the answers. I just know that certain things I know that the brakes are definitely better on the brakes. I had to brake a little earlier before than I do now. So I know that's helping, but I don't know. I don't think it's that big a difference. But, I mean, I know it probably helps some. Um, and in other things, they must have changed something in the weight or something with the car somewhere to get it to where it just basically picked up some time. So good for the Honda uh, people that love the Honda out there. They should be happy with that. And, um, of course, we'll go to the next track. And But, again, remember in this video, I will... Basically going to have the revised setups for Laguna Seca and Zanvoort. And, of course, the links for all three of these will be in the description. So let's go ahead and get to the next place. Okay, here we are at Zanvoort. Um, took a little longer than I thought it would take. But that's the way it always is. <laughs> Um, and again, I'm just going to go over the timetables. You see, I did about, let's see, what, 26 laps. Um, I ran some high 35, a couple of high 35s, and I want to show you this, just basically concentrate on this last stint after making some adjustments. Um, ran a, you know, a 36 0, 35 99, a 36 0, a 36 2, and a 36 0. So, I mean, that's really, really consistent, um, which I'm trying to get better at with the Honda. You know, sometimes I can get really you know pretty good but then i'm too inconsistent so actually it this felt like the most consistent um it keeps wanting you know wants to get on the tc all the time and i've tried so many different settings higher lower all kinds of stuff different diff and it's just really you got to have some really uh good throttle input because otherwise it just wants to jump on the tc and start stuttering and all that stuff so you know you get that turbo hit and, and then it just you know you end up just you know losing time so anyway um, as you can see, I had a 3597 up here, but again, you know, I wasn't even, I didn't, I had faster sectors all through here, so I could have been a little bit faster than what that was, but let's go over to setup. Got 23.7 left front, 24.5 left rear, uh, 26.2 right front and 25.9 right rear. Um, the toe is a negative 0 0.05 with the camber at negative 3.7 on the left front, negative 3.5 on the right front. The caster is at 8. The toe on the rear is negative 0.1 with the camber at negative 3.3 on the left rear and negative 3.1 on the right rear. And again, uh, a lot of changes here. A um, little bit more negative camber. Trying to be a little these, these left sides, especially the left front here at Zanvort, just takes an absolute thrashing. Um, constant trying to you know modulate your wear on this left front tire because it just constantly these hard hard right hand turns that are very fast. So um, and by the way, it goes really really well on the back on the front straight here. I mean that last corner. Um, I mean speed wise, it's okay. It's nothing. It's, it's right there. It's nothing super great or anything. But I'm talking about. You're coming on that last corner. It's just really free there, and just you can pin it all the way through that last corner, which I really like. Electronics I have at two, four, and two, and of course you might want to knock this up one click if you have no pit stop or you're trying to conserve tires because of the track. You might want to click it up one, trying to set or one or two clicks. I tried even four on both, and it just I don't know. You just see the TC on this. I can't get along with. So hey, hopefully the Evo 2. I, I thought they were coming out with some better uh, traction controls for the Evo 2. So I'm hoping this is one of the areas that they improve upon. Uh, fuel got 81 liters. That's what I ran at. Number one brake pads. It had just normal light graining type stuff. Nothing major. Uh, mechanical got five in the any roll bar. Brake bias is a big difference. I got it at 50, and you can go down to 49. 
Uh, excuse me. See if it feels really good there. No, no problems at all. Steering's all the way down. Springs on the front are 133,800 with a bump stop rate of 450 and a bump stop range of 3 on the left front and 5 on the right front. On the rear, the springs are 197,900 with a bump stop rate of 300 and a bump stop range of 20 on the left rear and 30 on the right rear. Any roll bar is 4 and the preload on the diff is 60. Um, here I tried a lot of different diff, diff settings trying to help the TC and I, I really, there's, I don't know, I really never found something that I really cared for, you know, really just, just stood out and really liked a lot. But this has the smoothest transition going through these long turns instead of giving getting some mid-corner um, understeer type stuff. Um, so again, I just settled for that. I would probably, you know, something to try, you can maybe try a, a, the 50 down one click. Um, or you can try maybe another click of any roll bar up to five, but you know somewhere right around here is really good for a base setup Shocks The left front is seven eight ten seven and the right front is seven nine nine seven So um, and then the left rear is four five nine ten and the right rear is five four seven eight and again That's all being tuned through Motec um, trying to they're you know pretty dang close so they're pretty close so I'm kind of happy with the settings um, they seem pretty decent taking the bumps and things like that arrow got 56 in the front with a 77 rear and a 10 rear wing and a four and a four in the brake ducts in the front arrow variation is a 6.5 to the positive now here now if you also notice um, the before the update, I didn't mention this in the Monza, but you see it only goes to 12 now. Where I think before it went to 14. So again, um, just another change in the parameters of the setups with the Honda. So again, you got to take that into consideration. But um, I tried less wing. I've tried different ride heights. I've just tried all kinds of different things. Trying to see if I can get a balance between the bumps and between arrow and between um, that bowl, you know, I, I'm a, I don't like going in that bowl and being on the edge and having the thing come around. So, so I, I think it's super good through there. That's another uh, strong point. You can really attack it through there compared to, you know, being on your tiptoes and scared it's going to come around on you. So you can really draw, you know, be pretty aggressive through there. So again, it's a really driver friendly um, and I actually beat my person my best with the honda by like six tenths or more the last time with the other setup my best was a 136.5 so and that's a race fuel load type thing so now um basically you know with the same race fuel load i'm running high 35s so the 36 flat so a solid six tenths faster so again you know, I, I don't know what they did or what's going on with it, but, you know, or that's with all the cars, but it's definitely, uh, with me, the Honda has definitely picked up. So that is the setup again for Zanvoort. So we'll move to the next track, which will be Laguna Seca. All righty, when we're over here now at Laguna Seca, and, um, yeah, these setups are pretty off. <laughs> So it's it's really rebalancing the the whole car, um, and I'll show you just just for kicks and giggles. And you see, my fast lap was a 122.80, and that was far from a perfect lap. So it's definitely faster um, than it was from before. I mean, I think the lowest I ran um, was a one after after the race, and then I did a setup. I think it was a 123.2 or 123.3. So about a half a second faster. And on top of that, it's not even a perfect lap because I hit, I just nicked a, a couple multiple sausages. So I probably could have knocked another tenth or more off of that. So and it could use more dialing in, but it's it's definitely quick. So I'll look at the uh, I just did the one setup. The other one that was softer, I didn't even redo because there's just no sense of doing it. Um, I'm actually gonna erase it. I'll delete it. But here, I just wanted to show you this loaded. Now, you see casters all the way down. Now, this stuff is pretty close. All my alignments, I think, are right there. Um, but then when you get into 
this is there. When you get here, I mean, look look at the wheel rates. Look at the springs. I mean, it's way, way down. I mean, super weak. Look at the brake bias all the way, 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 way down. And just things are just, the values are just all changed. Look at, look at the shocks. You know, zero here, zero, zero. Um, just everything is just, you know, and then you get to the arrow, and it only has a one rear wing. That That's it. I mean, this is not Paul Ricard or Monza, so <laughs> so yeah. I mean, it's just it's it's jacked up. So basically, um, definitely has to be completely redone. So anyway, let's uh, load the right one, the correct one. And I got twenty-five five left front, twenty-five eight left rear, twenty-four five right front, and twenty-five one. Right rear, the toe's negative 0.1 with the camber at negative 3.5, and the caster is 8. And the toe on the rear is a negative 0.15 with the camber at negative 2.8. Um, again, some of these adjustments aren't the same as the what it was in the original setup, but I'm just you know basically just going off of what the car is telling me and what it's what the time is telling me, and the tires are telling me, and all those kinds of things. So um, electronics are three, four, and three. Now here. If you have a longer race, you might want to consider going up to four on both of these, TC1 and 2, just to give you a little bit more uh, safety. Because, again, you know, Laguna Seca, uh, with this dirt and sand, I shouldn't say dirt, it's sand, um, you know, it just it can get really slick here sometimes. So, you know, that's up to you, but that gives you an option. Uh, Chris Fula had 80 liters. Mechan and number one brake pad. Of course, mechanical got four on the any roll bar. Brake bias is at 50, and you can go down to 49. It's not, even, not, it's not a problem. Steering's all the way down. Springs in the front are 121,640 with a bump stop rate of 400 and a bump stop range of 15. And on the rear, the springs are 190,000 with a bump stop rate of 350, and the bump stop range is 30. Any roll bar is 4, and the preload on the diff is 50. Now, you can go 60 also. Um, but 50 just seems to be a little bit better with some of these longer turns and the corkscrew and, you know, that turn one, well, it's actually turn one and turn two, but, you know, so it's, it's, it's that, you know, basically where you're double apex and it's like, turn you know, so that kind of turn there and things like that. So it just seems like 50 works a little bit better. Shocks, um... The left front is 9553, and the right front is 8653. Uh, the rear, left rear is 5378, and the right rear is 5379. So, again, all done by Motec. Um, they're pretty close. I mean, I, w I probably could use maybe a little bit more dialing in, but they're definitely, definitely close. Arrow. Got 56 in the front, 75 in the rear with a 12, maxed out 12 rear wing, and a 4, and a 4, and a brake ducts. Now, remember, again, like I said before at uh, Zandvoort, you know, the used to have a 14. It used to go up to 14 or something like that. So now it's only 12. But I tried a 10 rear wing, and I really tried to make it work. And it, ju it just, the rear end is just too, it's too inconsistent, too slidey. Um, especially in a lot, when you're really attacking the corkscrew and um, that really bad turn near, you know, the turn that I've always complained about, but going up, you know, before you go up the hill, that left-hander right there, and right there you will definitely, it just does not want to stay around, and then if you back it down enough to where it will, then it understeers everywhere else. So it just, it's just not, it's just not working right, and it just gives you more confidence. And again, I want to set up that, that, of a wide variety of people can drive and enjoy and, um, you know, hopefully pick up time and be faster and be able to race, not just put in one good lap and then the rest of it's garbage, you know. So, and that's what, you know, I'm trying to do. So, um, again, uh, this took a while, long, you know, a lot longer than the video, obviously. So, I sure hope you give me a like and subscribe. I'm really, I really try hard to, to uh, help out and to give you know decent stuff i mean good base setups and also you know the races and things like that to um you know watch and also the setups from my races so i sure hope you give me a like and subscribe and also share it 
and uh, you know the support whether you're watching the video that's support because you know it's all that YouTube stuff whether you're watching my whole video even if it takes multiple times or you know the liking and subscribing or PayPal which I have a link there also for PayPal if you support me that way all those things are support and I just want to say thank you to everybody no matter how you want to do it um, I appreciate it feedback or comments are always welcome and uh, I sure hope these setups work good for you and you can enjoy the Honda and I'll be, I'm looking forward to the uh, Honda Evo 2 and see what the differences are. And I hope you come back and visit again really soon. Y'all take care. See you.